Hey everyone, Biofan here. The Jaws of Hakon is the first DLC released for the main game of Dragon Age Inquisition. Unfortunately, on first release, the DLC was exclusively available for Xbox One and PC players. If you've yet to play the DLC, I recommend you don't continue to watch this review until afterward, as there are spoilers. If you've completed the main game, but don't want to be exposed to DLC spoilers, feel free to check out my 41 minute review of Dragon Age Inquisition. Okay, let's get going. The main story starts out slow with fetch quests, but gradually builds to a climactic and rewarding ending. I particularly enjoyed how the separate plots of Avarin conflicts and finding the first Inquisitor's remains continuously intertwine and become joined in the conclusion. This way, you could just do about any quest at any time, and it would feel natural to the story progression. Jaws of Hakon is a self-contained plot within a specific region of Thetis. You can play it prior to or after the ending of the main game. The new environment of Frostback Basin is gorgeous. Unique lighting, new plants and trees, and easily maneuvered with various paths. The environment continuously changes as you progress through the area's plot. Ice structures from a dragon, daylight changes from dusk to night, and a pretty aurora in the sky. The Inquisition's presence in the Frostback Basin is very well demonstrated. Large camps and patrols can be seen all around the area. The presence of the Inquisition forces was something the main game was lacking for most areas, so it's nice this has been greatly improved. This addition to an area really helps create the sense of leading a large and powerful organization. Treehouse camps are really fun and aesthetically interesting. Their high altitude allows for a good view of the surrounding areas, plus it helps keep you safely away from the enemies below. The elevators are also pretty fun and time saving, though I just wish it wouldn't be lowered directly down onto a group of enemies. There are a few new enemies unique to the region, such as the Hakonites, though I could have done with a lot fewer spiders. I couldn't go five minutes it seemed without being ambushed by a horde of spiders. Arachnophobes may want to exercise extreme caution when playing this DLC. SPIDERS EVERYWHERE! Ugh. The region itself is a level 20 plus area, which was desperately needed for high level inquisitors. And better yet, all the enemies scale to your level for the most part, making each fight a more tactical challenge for high level characters. Fade rifts in the Frostback Basin drop major loot. Tons of elemental essences, fade touched materials, and even super powerful weapons. There are also a bunch of new materials, such as leathers, metals, and cloths, that can be found in the region as well. Frostback Basin has many very powerful weapons and armor to uncover, as well as a new Inquisitor specific ability, Aegis of the Rift. This new ability is super useful as it shields you from any and every projectile attack, including a dragon's fire, ice, or energy ball and a giant's one-hit KO rock throw. There's also some nice new Avar-themed decor available for you to use to customize Skyhold. Along with the quests in the Frostback Basin, you'll be able to unlock new War Table missions as well. Overall, the story was pretty slow until it got closer to the ending, but there was a bunch of new lore introduced throughout the whole experience. My favorite part of the whole DLC was having a bear fight alongside you as an ally twice both epic and downright hilarious. I also particularly enjoyed being able to save a little nug from, well, yeah. Did I mention I love nugs? The ending introduced the most climactic part of the DLC, with a few shocking revelations and the appearance of the first Inquisitor. The final push to the temple tied all of the previous events together, and was great fun as you fought alongside the allies you gained through the story progression. This was another feature the main game needed more of, as it strengthened the overall sense of leadership. The only part of the ending I didn't really enjoy was the warmth mechanism. Having to run back to a fire pit every 10 seconds or so kept the player from really experiencing the interesting environment. There are some pretty good Harding moments throughout the story, as she aids you in completing several quests. Harding was a very loved character that only becomes more lovable with more screen time. There are also several comical moments. Very well. I wouldn't want life in the hold to become unbearable. Many of which involve Harding. 
They don't see that a real normal man fought the Avar and killed that dragon. And they certainly don't know about your strange fixation with Elfruit. My feelings for Elfruit are classified, Scout Harding. <laughs> I'll carry your secret to my pyre. While Harding gets a good new amount of dialogue and involvement with the plot, the presence of the companions felt very lacking. Banter and occasional in-plot comments are still present, but none of them felt particularly invested in the story. None of them had strong views on any of the issues taking place, or a personal tie-in to the plot progression. While this isn't exactly necessary, it would have been a great touch to really make progressing through the DLC feel of greater importance. The main game has 10 awesome, tactical, and unique dragon fights. The DLC continues this tradition, but makes slaying the dragon much more imperative. I really enjoyed this dragon fight in particular because of its relation to the plot, but I also love the dragon fights in general. One of the biggest flaws of Jaws of Hakon is that it lacks decisions. There aren't many, if any, decisions or alternative paths in the plot. You simply do what needs to be done with no moral conflict or alternative way to come to a solution. The first 75% of the plot felt pretty fetch questy. I feel a few more cutscenes would have added a sense of importance to even the more side quest type plot involvement. After the introduction, we don't see another cutscene until well through three fourths of the DLC. The price of the DLC, 11 British pounds or 15 US dollars, seems pretty high for 5 to 8 hours, or maybe even if you rush it like 2 to 3 hours, of content. So now let's wrap up this review and stick a bow on it. There were many powerful items and a plethora of new materials. The plot lacks decision points and alternative ways to reach a solution. The environment is breathtakingly beautiful, with several changing features as you progress through the DLC plot. The price seems a bit high for the amount of time you spend playing the DLC. The story builds to a very interesting ending, but starts out slow with several fetch quests. You fight alongside a bear. There is little companion involvement with the issues that take place. The area is scaled to be perfect for high level characters. A few more cutscenes would have made the slow portion of the plot feel more important and less like a series of side quests. I certainly enjoyed playing the DLC, and will definitely continue to replay it. I'd also very much recommend you go play it for yourself if you haven't already. There were a few great new additions to the game that were introduced in the DLC, several issues of the main game that were addressed, and also several that weren't. Due to the lack of plot decisions and the slow pace of the story for most of the DLC, I'm going to have to give Dragon Age Inquisition Jaws of Hakon a rating of 7.5 out of 10. What did you think of the Jaws of Hakon DLC? What were your top pros and cons? What would you like to see in future Dragon Age Inquisition DLC? Give me your thoughts down in the comments.